Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tax Garage. Well, if you're new to the channel, I'm here to help you figure out how to build your dream garage. And along the way, I do project builds. And today's build video is gonna be about putting a two inch, well, the ultimate two inch lift on my Jeep Gladiator. So let's jump right into the video. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. If you've been a long time subscriber, always good to have you back. If you watched my last video, I said thanks a lot for helping me reach 4,000 subscribers and I am giving away some Sonic tools because of that. And all you had to do was leave a comment on that video. Well, that giveaway is done and I wanna congratulate Demand1101. Reach out to me on Instagram at Gastax Garage and I'll be sending you some Sonic tools. But anyways guys, on top of that, there is only 19 more days to enter in to win this giveaway. So, roll the clip to see what you can win. Now that that's all done, let's jump into today's video. Now, I filmed this footage about three months ago. The reason I'm doing it now is because if you can see behind me, my garage is complete. When I did my two inch ultimate Mopar lift, the garage was in the process. So I figured this would be a good video. Although it's not talking about the garage, you'll be able to see how the garage used to look. And then in the next video, I will give you a tour of the completed garage, just to bring some, I guess, relevance to this video. Now, this ultimate lift that I did on the Gladiator was recommended by another YouTube channel, Gator underscore Overland. So Gator Overland, go check him out. Very helpful videos explaining why he chose all the parts. My video is everything I did to install this lift. His video, unfortunately, his camera cut out, so he didn't do an install video, but he did do an excellent explanation of why he chose the products he did. And those are the products I used. So I'm gonna jump into all the products I used, um, how much it cost, and then we can go through the install video. Firstly, this is not a cheap kit. Overall, it costs $4,700, and I recovered about $500 of that selling my old tires. So firstly, I did the two inch Mopar lift, which is $1,350. I did the Rancho control arm relocation brackets, which were $175. I did the rock crawler rear track bar relocation bracket, which was 96 bucks. The steer smart adjustable track bar, 300 bucks. The steer smart adjustable drag link, 720 bucks. The upgraded Mopar uh, steering stabilizer, which is 150 bucks. The tires, which I did a 315 70R17s, I did a Wild Peak AT3s, those are the tires I use on everything, uh, those were $1,500, and then I did some airbag helpers because I do tow with this and that was 108 bucks. Once that's all said and done, you obviously have to get an alignment and then you have to get the tires mounted, so that's $250. But stick around to the end because I'll tell you I ran into an issue with the alignment and I'll tell you how to solve that. So let's jump into today's video. Let's get the Jeep on the lift and get this project rolling. Alrighty guys, that took me a hot minute. Um, you know, driveways are pitched this way, well, however way, and it was cocking my lift a bit. So anyways, don't do what I do, just, you know, watch for entertainment. There's the Jeep. Uh, to be honest, this looks pretty intimidating. I watched a bunch of videos, obviously uh, this is coming too. I'm a YouTube certified technician. I watched a couple videos, cross my fingers, do one of these, and hope I do it right. Uh, so anyways, I'm gonna start with the front end because that's how it is. I'm gonna remove all of this and put some of this on there, just to mix and throw it on there. So, wish me luck and I'm gonna get started. about four hours let me show you what I have done I've essentially done the whole lift uh, I haven't tightened anything down yet 
I did uh, put this in here. Uh, I'll put a link down below and on the screen what it's called. Right now I'm actually working on the drag link and the whatever, these two thingies. Um, I needed to rent a tool to actually pry this out of the steering column here. So that's what I've been doing. That's what it's taking me some time. But I'm gonna actually do that tomorrow. Right now, you know, basically, got a whole bunch of tools out so I'm gonna clean up all the tools but tomorrow morning I'm gonna replace that steering rack uh, replace this and then tighten everything down and start working on the back front end is done let me just uh, go over everything I've done obviously the two inch lift so that includes the springs the shocks the arms I added this part uh, as recommended by another youtuber this is adjustable so if you got a two inch three inch or four inch lift i just got a two inch lift what else did i do okay so i added the steering here it's made it better the steering it's got a shock here i added an upgraded um also a steering shock and then i added this drag link i think it's called and that's to center the axle so i am going to get an alignment off the all of this obviously but now, you know, everything is loose. So I gotta go through, talk everything as per spec. Uh, these ones, and I think maybe that, all need to be talked with uh, the car weight on the actual axles. Otherwise the bushings in here will be talked with it drooping and that's a problem. It was not difficult per se, it's all manageable. It is a daunting task, if you will. Um, by yourself You got to move the axle swing the axle around uh, get bolts in and out that Makes things a little bit difficult, but overall all fine. All right, you guys. Well, that took me an hour just to talk everything down lots of different bolts to talk down but <clears throat> If you know me, I've talked to you about this blue marking uh, Paint I use it marks everything that I've talked down so these ones back here are 190 pounds, that's a pain. But you can only do that with the car's weight on the axle. So if you can see, uh, this, I just let it down a bit there, is uh, no weight on those, all the weights on the axle. But yeah, front is done now, thank goodness. I guess it'll take me all day to do the rear. So in the rear, I have this thing that I have to drill some holes that centers the axle more. This thing here. And then I got airbags for towing. The rest is stock. It actually looks. No, I'm not gonna say. It. I'm not gonna say it looks easy, but I just did. Shit. Anyways, let's jump out of that. I am done two three changes of clothes because it's 85 degrees and I sweat my ass off but anyways let's show you what I've done I've already gone over the front the front is done don't need to go about that all right on the rear here so you got to switch out these springs you're gonna change these tie rod then you got to put this bump space here put new shocks uh, that's all easy. I added airbags, so that's done. I don't know if these will work. Um, we'll see. What took me a long time was this piece here to recenter the axle due to the lift. So you have to drill four holes. I had to get more drill bits because obviously I'm trying to redo my garage at the same time I'm trying to do a big project. So most of my tools, I don't know, I packed away. I did have some, but I was missing some or couldn't find them. But anyways, I am gonna clean up now. And then I'll check back with you in the morning with the wheels on, because I'm pooped. I'm gonna go for a swim and cool down a bit, have a couple beers. I'll check you out in the morning. 
Alrighty guys, it is another day and I need to finish off the Jeep and clean this garage up. So I don't know if some of you have noticed, oops, just kicking it too. These are not the approved airbags for the Gladiator. These ones are. Now I was reading a bunch of different comments on Facebook groups and because I put the lift on, I ordered those ones. And those are for a Ram uh, 1500. And the reason is someone commented that because it's higher, but it doesn't, because it's taller shock, you need a, a taller bag. Now the problem is it's narrower than these. So I did buy these initially, but I think those aren't gonna do anything. So I'm gonna replace them with these and see what it does. Cause I mean, this is at 20 PSI now and it's moving around. So that's not going to really affect anything or help. So what I'm going to do is replace them with these ones, um, which shouldn't be difficult. And then I'm going to put the wheels on. And then we're going to head to MPC Northbrook to collect my Corvette, because they just did a post-purchase inspection, because that's how I do things. <laughs> And a couple of different things because I'm going to be tracking that and then they just going to do the alignment on this baby But anyways, let's install these put the wheels on Alrighty guys correct airbags are in let's check it out All right, as you can see the other ones were at 20 pounds and you could wiggle them They weren't filling up the space these ones are at 20 pounds now and I can't wiggle them They are filling up the whole space Unfortunately, I had to sacrifice these ones uh, cut them up they are much heavier duty rubber, if you will, and I couldn't compress them to pull them out and I didn't feel like undoing all of these bolts. So yeah, and then of course, these ones are a bit longer. So all oh, my piping was wrong <laughs> length, so I had to redo everything. But anyways, uh, that is done. These work, they are not leaking. And this is where I've put the, the fill line right here. Uh, anyways, I figured I got my shocker hitch here. The fill line is here. I got this. Keep it on the same side. Uh, that's why I did it. Now I'm going to lower the car, put the wheels on, and we're going to see how the stance looks with uh, the 33s. And then tomorrow I should have my 34s or 35s put on. The wheels are on. Let's lower this baby. All right, well, I didn't do a measurement, but it doesn't look too tall, but I'm sure it is. But that is what it looks like with the two inch lift. Obviously it needs to settle. The two inch Mopar lift with the 33s. Obviously I'm going to the 35s. Uh, one thing when you're doing this lift is you have to keep the car in neutral, but it wouldn't let me turn the car off. So. As I suspected, the car is dead. I thought about undoing the battery, but I just got lazy. This battery's been shot since I bought the car, so I'm not too worried. I guess I'll throw it on a trickle charger now. And uh, while I'm doing that, I'm going to clean the garage. Well, there you go, guys, and that is the kit installed. I actually went to my local uh, shop here that I like. I use MPC Northbrook, or their real name is MPC Chicago. They have a location in Northbrook. And that's where I get all my random things that I don't have machinery, tire mounting, uh, and uh, alignments, and so on. I took my Gladiator there with the tires. They're able to put the tires on, obviously, but they couldn't quite get the car tracking straight. Now, would I have noticed the difference? It is a Jeep. They're not, you know, the tightest uh, tracked cars ever. So I wasn't too concerned, but it was pulling quite a bit to the right. Now, this is when I gave uh, Gator Overland a little hit on his uh, YouTube channel. He gave me his phone number. He did mention a couple things he thought it could be. But overall, great help. Go check him out. Subscribe to his channel, Gator Overland. But what I ended up doing was taking uh, the Jeep to actual uh, Jeep dealership. where th And I didn't tell them uh, MPC couldn't um, get the car aligned. I wanted to see what they said. And basically, there was a recall 
or a known issue, not necessarily a recall on the steering box of the Gladiator. I have a launch edition. So once they had it, they said they couldn't get it to track straight and then they changed the actual steering box and then everything is fine. So that actually uh, worked out in my favor. They did an alignment and they gave me an upgraded steering box and everything is perfect now. So guys, I'm gonna throw in some pictures right now while I end this video of my Jeep. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Let me know what you think about how the Gladiator looks now. And don't forget to leave a comment down below to get your entry to win the Sonic Toolbox. But guys, until next time, thanks a lot for tuning in and I'll see you then.